Jeremy Tracy here from Tracy Crokinole Boards. What we are launching into now is a brand new series of critical analysis of matches, breaking it down to dig into the strategy and the decisions that are being made by the players at a competitive level. And what I thought would be easiest and nicest to do for me to do a critical analysis are matches that I myself am involved in, um, just so that it, you know, just so that it's clear that I'm not criticizing any of the players that are playing. So in this particular match, it's myself and my, and my friend Simon Dowrick, and uh, there were just some really interesting situations that set up in this match. And when I did the commentary, I just didn't have time to dig into that. So that's what the purpose of this is. I'm gonna you know be able to break it down and show you what's going on, the thinking behind it, and with the idea that you can learn um, deeper strategy, different uh, different strategy that you can apply to your game and then uh, put a whooping on your buddy in a match sometime soon. So if you find this helpful, please you know let us know and let us know what questions come up. What did I not cover well enough, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. But uh, let's dig into it and take a look and see uh, how this match plays out. So this first round, uh, we're actually going to look at it in its entirety because it got interesting further very early on. The other matches, the other rounds of this match, we're going to jump a little little bit further in because an open 20s race there isn't really much to break down from a critical analysis perspective so in this first round um, Simon has the hammer and I uh, so I opened up with a 20 and so what you see happening Simon has missed so this is when it starts to get interesting because what I could do is try to power through and get uh, a follow through 20 let's see that not to highlight his miss, but, uh, but yeah. So what, it, what some players would do is they would go for a follow through 20 or they'd just do a hit and stick. The challenge with doing a hit and stick is that my shooter would remain right here, which would open up a possibility for Simon to come in and do some sort of a pin shot, as he would call it, where you he would hit my button, then a pin, and then back. But what I tried to do instead was to hit and then pull my button back, pull my shooter back on my side of the board, which I was successful in. Now right here it may sound it may sound simple but let's look at what happens Simon very quickly looked at his options and it's very easy for me at this point to look at it and do the whole armchair athlete thing you know hindsight's always 2020 and say well he should have gone for Hogan's Alley but the one good thing that Simon did here was I saw him stop and consider both of his options so often I will see new players and they just they just place and shoot they don't they don't look at all their options and we've actually got a tip about that it's like you know um, hurry up and take your time about it, I think I think was what we called it but he did he did look at his options and this one, uh, this one doesn't end well for him because he catches the pin. I was able to take advantage of that. Now I'm up 220, so I'm definitely, uh, definitely in good shape here. Simon learning from his mistake. This time goes for Hogan's Alley, but he wasn't able to get his wasn't able to get his button off as well to force play back to the middle. Now some people would say would think that he wanted to keep his button on, um, but yeah, absolutely. He doesn't because you'll see what I did here was rather than knock his off, I left my shooter on here. And the idea is that right now I am in control. I'm up 220s. Simon wants to get play back to the middle. I want to keep it on the outside. So by not taking his out, I've extended it. Now he may be able to, he could shoot through here and take mine out, but then I'd still have his to work with and continue wasting buttons, extending that play outside. So what Simon does in this case is he tries, he's trying to catch his button and mine to clear everything off. That's the goal. He was unsuccessful. Now here's another strategy that we're going to talk about here briefly. At this point, I line up, I'm up 220s already. I've got one on my side. I'm definitely in control. I go for an open 20, miss, and I shoot long, which if you're ever going to make a mistake, that's the time to do it. But the strategy that I want to talk about, there is the option. It, some people think it's controversial, but I happen to think it's great strategy. I could have just intentionally taken my button, set it down, and shoot it off to the side because I am in fantastic shape right now. Right now, if I had done that, the, the end result would be the same. But if I had done that, then Simon again is forced to try to shoot and hit a button all the way on my side of the board. Whereas by going for the open 20, I do, it does open up the possibility that I could have come up a little bit short. And in this case, if I had come up a little bit short and set him up with a hanger 20, not only could he get a hanger 20, but he could have got a 20, a double, 
Like he could have, uh, by hitting mine here, he could have caught this one as well and really turned the tide on this. Whereas if I had done the safe, in my opinion, smart strategic thing and just shot my button off to the side, uh, they call it troughing your shot, it would have been a better strategy on my part to do that rather than create any possibility for him to get back into this round. As I say, because I went long, the end result was the same, but I could have forced that situation to happen. Now Simon is able to get the uh, to get the off, forcing play back to the middle. Now one more point of strategy. I have a decision to make here because obviously I want to move that button away from the middle. I want my shooter to end up not in a good situation for Simon to be able to use that. So now because I'm obviously going for a bump and run, I could have gone the angle that I did, or I could have come up. I could have come up this. And uh, basically in this situation, you just want to stop and ask yourself, what am I going to leave my opponent to work with if I go on this angle versus on that angle and make whichever decision you think is best. The angle that I chose, a little tougher to drop the 20, but I feel it was also perhaps, didn't, wasn't as likely to set him up. At this point, that pretty much, uh, that's pretty much the end. Not much to talk about there. So round number two, we're gonna jump to two minutes and 20 seconds. We jump to this point in the round because uh, you know the the twenties race isn't all that uh, isn't all that interesting to break down. So at this point in the round, we're tied at three twenties each, and Jeremy, myself, I have the hammer. So what happens? Simon goes long. Now at this point, I have a decision to make. What do I want to have happen? If I hit and stick again, I'm going to be creating an opportunity for him to use use a pin to get back in. But instead, I was able to pull that play back to my side of the board. Um, yeah, it's just, it's keeping control and it, it was just making sure I didn't create any opportunities for him. I didn't want him to have anything to work with because he's so creative and very skilled at those pin shots. So now Simon is probably at this point, it, he could have, he could have gone with the option of clearing everything off to force play back to the middle, but he didn't go for that. So then on my shot, after that on my shot, I would have had a couple options here. So one option would be if I wanted to go for the takeout, I come way over to the far right side for me because anything else, the likelihood is that my shooter is going to, I'm either gonna hit it at such an angle that his is gonna catch the pin, could kick back and kick mine off, or if, if I don't catch that pin, I might hit it at such an angle that my shooter ends up here, or even worse, it could end up right here. So what I decided to do instead was um, play cheeky, as Simon would say, and I just touched that. It, and it is, that is a tough shot to make because if I'd hit it too hard again, I would have kicked my shooter off. But again, I'm, I'm playing with them. I'm wasting, I'm wasting buttons on my side of the board. Now, the reason I'm doing that is because I have hammer. If I didn't have hammer, that would be a terrible strategy. I've got last shot, I'm in control, so I'm keeping play on my side. Because if you want to, if you want to keep play on the outside, it's in a situation where either you're tied in 20s and you have the hammer, or you are ahead in 20s. In either one of those cases, that's when you try to burn time, burn buttons on the outside, like I'm doing here. Simon, I think he was probably trying to peel everything off there. But uh, again, I, I talked about this in my video about not getting the off. What some, like if you overutilize that strategy, if I had left a second one on of his, I'm, I'm digging a hole. There, there was no benefit in leaving a second button of his on because right now, especially where this is, there's no real possibility of him catching his own and mine. He's not set up for uh, to clear everything off the board. So I just left things right. Took his out, left mine here. Again, just making things difficult for him to get back into this round. Simon does clear everything off here. Now, this is where I wanted to break this down because I absolutely 100% make a mistake here because we are getting down as much as I love the strategy of keeping play out here, uh, keeping it on your side of the board, staying in control, burning buttons. Right here what I did was I did the same strategy I used before, just did that light touch, 
But in this case, that was a terrible decision on my part. I would have been way better off to come wide, get the takeout, and just leave mine on. Because as long as I can keep my shooter on my side of the board, and there's no opportunity for him to create a 20, there's no, like, there's no opportunity. All he's left with is leaving me with a shot, um, a simple shot on my side of the board in order to win the round with the hammer shot. But what happened, because I overused my strategy and left this here, it is a tough shot for Simon. I think that was my motivation, was just to be, uh, just to make his life challenging. It is a tough shot because he's trying to hit the green without hitting the white, which he does. But this is why I say it was a terrible decision because now I don't just have a simple takeout. I need to pick one of. I either need a double, which it's not set up for at all. It would just be. I'd have to shoot very hard straight into this. Who knows what would happen? So my option is I've either got to I've got to come over here somewhere and either try to angle off this into the 15 or that one. I need to pick one of these buttons to angle off of with my final shot because then it, we're tied in the 20s. I need to win on the board, so I need that 15. Whereas if I had taken his out, all I would have to do is just do a simple takeout and win. But now I need to do and you see what happened there. I hit can hit this peg like I was just setting myself up for the potential of an error by over utilizing that strategy of, of extending play on my side so yeah that's where I went wrong so that as much as I love that strategy that technique um, you just need to use it you need to use it at the right time and not use it at the wrong time now at this point we're gonna jump to round number four because it, round three was just Simon will say I jumped past it because he won that round, but the truth is there just there isn't really any strategy to break down. So we're gonna jump to round four and it's at 627. There's 625. So at this point, Simon is up by a 20, but I have the hammer. Then we've got one button of each color on. So when I look at this, I have a decision to make. I could either try to hit and stick right here, which would leave me with two of my buttons on. So yes, he's up a 20, but I need to, basically I'm looking forward in time. I want to win this. I either need to get a 20 to get back into the, like even in the 20s count, or I need to beat him on the board. So what I chose to do was go for a follow through 20 but may not have been my best strategy. I could have either hit and stick here to keep two on, but I just needed to, I think I was worried about setting him up with any kind of a possibility to get a ricochet 20. Now Simon, he is in a really good opportunity here because like I say, he is up in that 20 count. Even though I have hammer, he's still in pretty good shape. And what he tries to do is get over here and hide. And that's a great strategy because if you look at it, if he had been able to get his white button just over here a little bit further, what a miserable, miserable shot for me to go because Hogan's Alley has been pretty much taken away from me. That like, that is like, I'd have to be a little bit loopy to try to drive something through here. So because that one lane has been taken away, if he had just gotten over here a little bit further, then this shot would have gotten very tough. And what can happen when you go for something like that is you catch a peg, come back and hit your own, and end up in all sorts of, uh, all sorts of trouble on the board. So I just went with the hit and stick there, waiting for something, something better to set itself up. I may have, it may have been good strategy, hindsight's 20-20 being a bit of an armchair athlete here, but um, I may have been better off to peel everything off because Simon doesn't have much of an opportunity to work with this one. So at this point, he could either be going for a ricochet 20, and I think that's what a lot of players would do is they see this, now if, you, if you're feeling really good about your ricochet 20s, have at it. The challenge is if you come up a little bit short and you set me up, one, I'd have the 20, but two, I've still got this one on. So it's a matter of choosing, okay, do you want to, do you want to go aggressive? Do you want to play defensive? When Simon comes to this side, the other option he would have had was to drop way over to the left and do a hit and stick again, leaving his, leaving his shooter right here. So I think that just 
taking that extra couple seconds to look at, okay, one, what are my options to get the off? And two, what am I going to leave my opponent with? I think if he had looked at his options a little longer, he may have chose to, to drop his shooter right here. Again, leaving me that super tough takeout. So I'm really not sure what he did, but the end result was he ended up he ended up here. Whether he was going for the hide or the or the angle in 20, I'm not sure. But regardless, I was trying to I was trying to hit his and catch enough peg to get it back in, not necessarily for the 20, but just to to create it, create future opportunities. Now, whether that was intentional or not, I don't know, but Simon did pull an amazing shot there because now you see what's happening is on the board. This one right here is only worth 10 points. If that was in just a little bit further and it was worth 15, it completely changes things because all I would need to, I, I could just continue play out here, 15 here, I've got final shot. So even if it just, even if the game just ended with me having another one out here in the five, I would tie him on the board. Now, some people say a tie is like kissing your sister, but it is also at this point in the game, I'm up four points to two. So a tie in this last round wins me the game. So, but I, all that was just to say if this was a 15, but because it's a 10, peel everything off, force him to come in here. Um, one, that's the only way for me to get back in for a 20. And two, because it's, it's, n it's really not a great setup for him. He was going after some pin action, which he did get. It just didn't uh, it didn't end up resulting there. Now, yeah, I think I did look at this option. It was just a little too, if this white had been a little bit closer, there would have been the option to come up this line for a touch 20 or even a takeout 20. But instead, uh, that, that shot isn't there. So it almost forces me to go for a follow through 20 because yeah, I need, I need a 20 before this round ends to, to offset the one that Simon has. So right here, again, it's a matter of stopping, and Simon is looking at his options, but I, I, I suspect what he didn't do was really think about what he needed to do. So many players look at this and say, I'm going to get the takeout 20. He needed, all he needed was the 20. Even a touch 20 would have been enough because let's say he had just bumped this, gotten the 20, and left my green one here. Let's say he had dropped that 20. See, he hit that hard enough for the off. If he had gotten the 20 and left my green here, even if I dropped to one side or the other and drain a 20, it's still not enough to win. He'd have two 20s, I'd have one and a 15 on the board. I'm still short five points. That sinking even a touch 20 would have guaranteed he won the round. But instead, he left this here. The nice thing is he left it on the right side of the hole. Simon's really gonna give me a hard time for this because I was able to get the follow through 20 and tie that round and uh, it was a tough shot. It was a low percentage shot to get that kind of a follow through 20, but the, the challenge is with his strategy, he left the door open. Um, yeah, that's your job as an opponent is to not leave the door open, any possibility for your opponent to come back. So there it is. That's the critical analysis, the breakdown of a few situations that happened in that match between Simon and myself. Um, I'm hoping to do more of these because I enjoy dissecting this, doing the postmortem, breaking it down, looking at uh, what went well, what didn't go well. Um, let, let us know, are, are you, do you enjoy this? And uh, I guess I'm gonna critical analysis, my critical analysis now. There are a couple parts of this could have been a little bit smoother. As I do more of these, these will get better. Uh, but yeah, let me know, um, you know, is there a match that you'd like to see broken down? And I'll talk to Nathan at Crokinole Center and, and get his blessing, hopefully, to, to be able to, uh, to, to use that footage. And, uh, or is there a situation that you're wondering how it should be handled? But, uh, and if we can look at a real live match and break that down for you, then uh, yeah, hopefully it'll help everyone's game get stronger. Um, until next time, have fun playing the greatest game on earth. Yeah.